Hey guys, it's Alexey from Ace5 Studios and today we're gonna be talking about some practical Expresso application and a little other stuff based on me finally deciding to fix the landscape object because it's just been too long since I've been building this asset every time I need it. So I'm gonna show you how to make it and you can download it and whatever. So in Cinema 4 you have a landscape object, except it has one fatal floor. Let's say you make a mountain, right? and you're making a mountain range. So you place it up here, let's get our ground plane. So we have a little mountain here, and then we have another mountain, and another mountain, and like this one is longer, and it's like rotated, and this one is maybe this way longer and taller. Up, oh, and then this is, see what happens? It disappears, and now it's underground, which is really not convenient at all. And this is what I will show you how to fix today. So let's delete this, delete this, delete this, delete this, and let's make a new landscape object. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to put it into a null. So press Alt G, and then we're going to right click and Cinema 4D tags and oops, that's at da, Expresso. So, and in my Expresso window right here, we're going to drag landscape object in twice. In the first one, we want to grab our object properties and size Y, which is this value here. As you can see, when we drag it, it's scaling from an arbitrary middle point. And then here, we're going to go coordinates, position, not global position, regular position, because we want the position inside the null, Y. And we're going to drag this into here. And that did not work right at all because we need to divide it. See, it moves up and down when you scale it. So we're kind of halfway there. We're going to go to XPool, search math, and math add. And we're going to go here, and input two should be two. And we're going to change from add to divide and drag this value into here, and then this value into here. And we're in the right place. And now, as you can see, when we grab the little orange dot, it works very well. So you think, ha, we've done it. We have made a tutorial. But unfortunately, no, we're not done yet. Because we're going to run into this problem. Let's say you place this mountain over here, right? And it seems to be working pretty well. And then you like control drag it here. And oh no, it doesn't work. Because here now we have two landscapes. So delete this. Um, because this expresso is only for this one object. So what we should do is we should copy this null. But now, as you can see, it's also in the wrong place. Like if we copy the null, It'll still work if we click on landscape object, but that's also annoying because if you if they're in the distance and you want to move these around and you want to click on a bunch of them and then move them is not what you want. So let's move this guy back to zero zero by reset PSR. By the way, this command reset PSR bind it to something. I use tilde x, but it's very handy to have this command. Now, so it still works. So in Cinema 40, there's a couple of tricks you can use. Uh, the easiest way is to put this null into a subdivision surface. Because now when you click on it, it selects the whole thing. And if you control drag it, you still have the object and you have a clone of everything inside. And to get to the orange dots, you just double click on it. And then you have your orange dots. Obviously, subdivisions are a bit high, so drag them back to one. If you put it to zero, it stops. The functionality stops because if you see you put it to zero, now when I click on it, it selects the actual geometry, not the subdivision surface, because putting it to zero effectively disables the subdivision surface. So this is the approach that I use that I kind of like. And still here though, we if we have a bunch of these mountains, let's say in the mountain there, a nice mountain range, and we scale them out and make some of them higher up and move them back. Make another one. Also don't forget you can change the seed here. You click on it, seed, seed, you have different mountains. So that's pretty cool. So this guy's seed as well, seed. It'll be a nice spike. And so we're pretty much, you know, it's it's close enough. But you can also, since we're learning Expresso here, um, let's add a bit more. Um, we can, for example, here we can add a little cube. Let's make a cube, let's scale it down, and let's put it here and make sure it is inside the subdivision object somewhere and drag it in here 
And here, let's go coordinates. No, object properties. Object properties size y. And here, um, object prop no, coordinates position y. And drag this guy in there. And now, as you can see, we can drag this little circle. But see, the problem is now if we just click on it, you move the whole object because the subdivision of surface is subdividing by default the object which is first in this hierarchy. So if we click on it, landscape now, uh, you can't really move it. Well, you can move it sideways, but the point is our function no longer works. So we can click on the cube and move it, and that works. But we want this to be easier. So what we do is we have to switch these positions. We have to put the null on top. And now, when you click on, a, on the landscape, you can move the whole thing and copy it. And when you click on the cube, it just selects the cube. And you can move it up and down and adjust the size of your mountains. Nifty, right? Um, we can go even further and add, for example, the rotation of this cube. We can make it affect the seed. So, for example, landscape here, we can have object properties and seed. And cube, object properties, now coordinates, rotation. Let's check which rotation do we need. Rotate the green one. The green one, as you can see down here, is H. So, whoops. <laughs> Zero. Okay, so now we need to drag that in. So, we go here, we'll coordinates, rotation, H. And we could drag it in straight into C, but that's probably going to be a bit messed up. I mean, it could be workable. So we rotate it. Doesn't do anything. Oh, there you go, it does. We have to rotate it much further. So we probably need a. Oh. Well, basically, yeah, that works. Might want to range map it if you don't like this. Um, I'll show you what the range map it does while we're here. Range mapper. So for example, uh, this guy is ex uh, this guy is sending out a radian value. So here, um, input range, well, whatever, we leave it zero to one. You should radians look it up on Khan Academy or YouTube at what radians are. And output range will be zero to one, but let's make it so we replace it first. So right now there'll be no change in rotating this. But if we change this output upper to say like four, now when we rotate, it should change much faster. Yeah, there you go. So we need small rotations. Probably even make this like 10. Yeah, there we go. There you go. Now we have a whole bunch of rotations. And we can change the seat. So we can quickly pick, an, pick a mountain, drag it over here, grab this cube, rotate it, make it higher up. Something like this. Maybe that's 10 is too much. Let's do it like five. I just changed this one, but <laughs> anyway, so now let's okay, let's delete this one. Okay, so we have five and let's drag it, drag it, drag it. And now we can easily change the height, the shape of our mountains. And if we need to change the width, we can we'll have to double click on it still and then grab the little orange box here. But Anyway, there you go. So we have a dynamic little setup for building mountain ranges. I hope that was helpful. And you'll learn some stuff about Cinema 4D while you're at it. Over and out. And don't forget to comment if you liked it, if you have questions. Um, yeah, and check out my website for both the five-man and tutorials. You know, it's all good stuff. <clears throat> See you around.